Hey guys, it's MC Fix It here. We have a 2005 to 2020 Nissan Frontier. We're going to be changing out the front pads and rotors. Stick around for all the tools, supplies, and the details. So here are all the tools and the supplies I used for the front rotors and brake pads here are the brake rotors they are an s31412 and the pads both of these are the premium kits is a p1049 um, they do have pretty much everything you'll need in them for the brakes um, and the rotors which is very very nice i'll put some other options as well online if you don't like the detroit axle brand you can pick some other ones from those links down there we used two different size uh torque wrenches because you have to put them to some different torque specs I then used a lot of brake clean just to make sure everything is nice and clean a regular ratchet flathead I wear a lot of gloves because I don't want all the chemicals on me uh, brake fluid can be cr very corrosive a tool that allows you to compress the caliper with a brake pad on it you might need a hammer depending on where you live or a rubber mallet or a sledgehammer to really knock the rotors off 21 millimeter 19 millimeter 14 millimeter socket breaker bar extension uh, then I used a uh, half inch drill and depending on where you live you might need some pp blaster as well these are the tools and the supplies i used you might need a little bit more maybe a little bit less but this is what i got the project done with um, we're going to go ahead and remove the lug nuts to get started 21 millimeter the vehicle has already been jacked up and has jack stands for extra security hit the top of it and swing that tire out and around so there are two caliper bolts, one on the top, one on the bottom. Both of them are 14 millimeter. And once they're broke, you can get them off by hand, just like so. And then don't forget the one down here on the bottom. And there's that second bolt. We're gonna go ahead and kind of slide this back and forth, and then set it back here because you don't want to damage that. Don't not let that thing just hang there. But we do need to set it out a little bit out of our way. So however you can do that, because we have two more bolts we'll need to get off in a second. Go ahead and use a flathead and begin to get these off. There's one. Depending on what kind of set you got, you might have to reuse your clips. Other than this little separator that keeps it from grinding. Sometimes you can get them out by hand, other times you can't. We'll go ahead and remove these because I know we have new brackets. Now we need to go ahead and remove the caliper bracket. These are bigger bolts and they're right back here and here. These ones are 19 millimeter. It will help to have a breaker bar on this as well because they are pretty tight in there. So go ahead and get the first one started. And then we'll just go ahead and spin them both out by hand. So there's the first one. These bolts are pretty big, pretty long, so they do take a little bit of spinning to get them out. Go ahead and grab the second one out. Then if you live in the north, you're probably going to have to beat the snot out of this. This is uh, down in Texas, so it's off. So go ahead and grab your new rotor. And I kind of like to do this by just simply, I'm going to be using the bag a lot. You're going to put this on backwards at first, which may seem a little silly, but we do need to clean this surface. So one of my favorite cleaning methods is just brake cleaner. So, spray that down, let that dry, and then we'll flip it the other direction. Go ahead and spray this side down. 
I also like to go ahead and spray the bracket as well. If you do have a file, you can file it. I also do the caliper, and so that's all done. You go ahead and grab your bracket back. And you want to make sure you got a good amount of grease. This thing actually has a lot of grease in it, so we're good. I'm not going to add any more to that. But if you don't have any grease in there, you are going to want to add grease. Make sure to put it back how it's supposed to be. Then we'll go ahead and put your bracket back on. Depending where you live and how much rust you have, you may need to spend more time scraping that um, more than just spraying, but this is in really good shape. So now we're going to go ahead and put these bolts back in. So go ahead and take a 19 millimeter. I'm just going to go till it stops. These things are pretty long. Most of the time I just do it by finger tight, but I'm just going to use the ratchet on this. So the specs I found for this set 185 foot pounds. Okay, make sure those are nice, good and tight. Our next thing we need to do is go ahead and compress the caliper pistons. There are two pistons in this, so it will be a little bit different. Use an old brake pad and then you'll use your tool. And we're with this tool, we need to kind of go slow and we're gonna have to get one side done uh, and just slowly move one side and then undo it and then slowly move back in the other side. And so this is gonna be a long process. If I had two of these, you could do it kind of simultaneously, but you don't want the pistons to get out of whack so it's going to be one side just a couple of turns undo it the next side a couple of turns undo it and just keep out that process so once those are both compressed uh, we're going to go ahead and put it back down here for another couple of seconds and get our pads set up so we're going to go ahead and grab our clips and put our clips into place <laughs> And the clips are the same for the top and the bottom. And then we're going to go ahead and grab our first brake pad and put a little bit of grease on the top of it here. And here, do not get any grease on the actual pad. The one that has this piece is on the back or closest to the engine. Um, it will allow it to um, make kind of a grinding sound as you get close to your pad wearing out. We'll go ahead and grab the front pad and we'll put it into place. We're going to put a little bit of grease on it as well. Just like so. And we'll go ahead and put this in. Just like that. I do like to put grease on this as well. Just helps prevent any kind of noise you could get from it. And then you have these, which um, are little brackets that you put in. One goes on the top and one goes on the bottom. And these help kind of separate the brake pad from hitting the rotor as it's spinning. If I remember correctly, I only pulled one off, but this is an aftermarket style, so it could be that that's the case and the original ones only had one, but I'm going to look here in one second to see if that is the case. And you do want those to go in flat, so you might have a little wiggling you got to do. From what I can tell, there was only one. Even though there was a spot for one on the top and bottom, I only had one in my box of all my stuff. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and spray everything down one more time. I'm gonna go ahead and get brake cleaner, clean it one last time, get it all good. 
once your caliper's on, sometimes you do have to push in on the bolts on the top and the bottom. And I do like to put these in by hand to make sure I'm not cross-threading them at all. And we'll go ahead and tighten them down 14 millimeter to 26 foot-pounds of torque. Perfect. You can go ahead and put back on your wheel and uh, put back on your lug nuts, tightening them down to 98 foot-pounds of torque. Some people do like to bleed their brakes. If you wanna do that, you'll get a hose and a 10 millimeter, crack it after you've done one, two, three, and hold it down with the brake. Crack it open, let it bleed a little bit, close it back up. Do that two or three times to remove all of the air bubbles out of your system. That really helps when you do anything with the actual line, uh, but it might be something you wanna do to clean it all out. That's doable as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, put them down in the comment section below. Make sure to give it a like and subscribe.